Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Ann Reardon and today I'm making up a new dessert recipe that combines some of my favourite flavours. We've got a lemon and almond cake with layers of apple and a rich caramel mousse, a thick caramel sauce covered in a cream cheese frosting. Let's start with that caramel mousse, for that you'll need cream, more cream, sugar, egg yolks, water and gelatin to make it set. And all these recipe quantities are on the howtocookthat.net website for you in grams and ounces and cups and there's a link to that below. The first thing you want to do is put the sugar and the water into a pan and put that over high heat and leave it to boil unstirred. Add a small amount of cream to the gelatin and stir that up quickly and keep an eye on your sugar. Once you see it starting to go golden, give it a swirl and keep it on the heat just for a few moments. We want to deepen that caramel colour but we don't want it to burn. Once you've got an even golden colour, you can add in the smaller amount of cream. Stir it in until it's smooth and then take it off the heat and add in the gelatin. The heat from the caramel will melt that gelatin, so just keep stirring until all those lumps are melted in. Beat your egg yolks and then add in a little bit of the hot caramel mixture in and whip it together. This just makes it easier to add the egg yolks through the hot mixture without ending up with lumps or chunks of cooked egg yolk. Now tip that egg yolk into the pan, whisking as you do, and keep whisking until you can't see any more of the yolk mixture. Now just to make sure our egg yolks are cooked, return the pan to the heat and stir it constantly. Tip your pan as you go so that you can see the bottom, and as soon as you start to see it sticking to the bottom there a little bit, take it off the heat immediately and let that cool to room temperature. Take the rest of your cream and whip it until it forms stiff peaks or it can hold its shape. Now that your caramel mixture is cooled, it will start to thicken up. Now as you're cooling this, you don't want to put it in the fridge or it's going to set. You just want it at room temperature. Take a good scoop of your cream and mix that through thoroughly and quickly just to lighten the mixture up. Once you're happy with that, pour all of it into the whipped cream and fold those two together. So to fold your scoop down to the bottom and bring it up over the top. So down to the bottom and over the top. It's different to a stirring motion. The stirring motion will kind of flatten all the air out of it and it won't have that bubbly, moussey texture that we're after. Use a mandolin or a knife to cut even slices of apple and then use a circle cutter to make rounds that will fit into a muffin tin. Pipe some mousse into the base of a silicon muffin tin and add the apple with layers of mousse in between. If you don't have a silicon muffin container, you could use a normal tin and line it with cupcake liners instead. Use a spatula to level off the top and then place that in the freezer once you've got them all filled up. Pipe dollops of leftover mousse onto baking paper and freeze that too. Freezing it makes it easier to handle but it also softens the apple that we've got in our layers there. So you don't need to cook the apple, it tastes like fresh apple but it has the texture of stewed apple once it's been defrosted, it's pretty cool. Now for the lemon and almond cake. You need egg yolks, icing sugar, the rind of one lemon, baking powder, flour, margarine or butter and almond meal. And all you need to do is put everything in the one bowl and then we'll mix that together. I made this recipe up quite by accident. I was trying someone else's recipe for almond cream that used half of these ingredients and it didn't taste good. So I took the mixture, added eggs, baking powder and flour so that I could bake it and not waste the ingredients. And it turned out to be this super moist, amazingly easy cake recipe. So I've used it again since. Put scoops into cupcake liners and bake that at 180 degrees C or 350 F. Now to make that yummy thick caramel for the centers. So you'll need sugar, milk and cream and also some glucose syrup. If you don't have glucose syrup you can swap this out for the light corn syrup instead. Heat that unstirred until it starts to boil. 
Whew, that was close to boiling over. <laughs> Make sure you use a pan that is big enough there. And then add a candy thermometer to the side and keep it boiling on high heat until it reaches 106 degrees centigrade. Pour that hot caramel into a mold and freeze that as well so that we can neatly add it to the centers rather than trying to spoon in thick salty caramel. Peel the paper off the outside of the cakes and cut a hole out of the middle and you can see how lovely and moist this cake is. Add a frozen caramel to the middle and then a frozen caramel apple mousse on top of that and on top of that put a frozen dollop of caramel mousse. Now you can try piping the cream cheese frosting directly onto this, but once you're done, you're gonna be able to see all the gaps, they're very visible. So instead I suggest that you smooth on a thin layer of the frosting first, and then pipe carefully around and around and around. And the frosting recipe for this is on my website too. Fix any little breaks in the frosting as best you can, and then leave it to defrost before serving. Let's look inside. And there you have it. Look at those yummy apple layers and the oozing caramel. Have fun experimenting in your kitchen and if you're new around here and you're new to baking, maybe try making just one element of this dessert. If it seems too hard to make all of them, you can pick just one. Click here for my channel, here for desserts, here for chocolate and here for cake. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.